Hey guys, welcome to game two between Jiraiya and Thebus from Hasu League semifinal match of BSL Season 13. If you want to see the other side of the bracket, go to Revolution Veer's channel. And it will be... He covered the quarterfinal as well between Jedi 1 and White. I'm not going to spoil, just in case you still want to catch those matches. I'm not going to spoil that. Upper right and corner, we have Jiraiya. Red Jiraiya from Team Red. Starting as the White Zerg. Bottom right and corner, we have Phoebus starting as the Yellow Terran. Game 1, good thoughts from Jiraiya with the Lurker Hidden Expansion build order. But Phoebus, able to get position and just... Honestly, with an additional 10, 15 seconds, Jiraiya probably could have gotten a Defiler out and maybe held. So I think it was a pretty close match overall. And that would have been a big swing in momentum. But Phoebus, able to do the two-pronged attack and then attack the, that third base that was uncovered. And I feel like that was the shift in the match. Jiraiya still clinging on, making a really good match of it, in my opinion, all things considered. <clears throat> Phoebus having a little bit more trouble with his multiple location pressure in the previous match as well. It shows you that Jiraiya is a pretty solid match for him and is capable of taking games. So it is possible he could pull out of this bracket. Also, he's live in Twitch chat. And sometimes, I was mentioning this in between games, when the players are live in the Twitch chat for their own games, sometimes I wonder, does that mean they, they won overall? Maybe that's a spoiler. I'm not going to speculate too hard on that. Nine pool. In the upper right-hand corner, Overlord is heading the right direction to go ahead and get a scout. Phoebus grabbing the barracks above his assimilator, sorry, above his Vespin Geyser. And I keep calling it an assimilator instead of a refinery as well. Work on that. Casting mechanics, diggity, come on. Fortunately for Phoebus, I, did he catch the Overlord? I think he, well, maybe. No, I don't think he caught the Overlord. So scooted in, tried to catch the Overlord, but was slightly off timing. So now it is gonna be even a longer delay on his scouting pattern. I think the Overlord might have actually even caught the SEV in the vision difference, potentially. We will see once these Zerglings are produced, and we are seeing, looks like, not just six Zerglings, but eight Zerglings. Overlord pressing forward, first Marine in production, and this could be bad news for Thebus. Drone Scout in the upper left-hand corner finding nothing. I don't know if Jiraiya saw that or not. This is going to be close. I think he now sees, sees that SEV in the corner, this Overlord... Needs to evacuate. The Zerglings repositioning. So it looks like he did not catch that. A lot of Zerglings flooding through. Natural expansion on the way. And Phoebus tried to grab a command center behind this. So this might be a potentially a quick win for Jiraiya. That Marine going to get pinned to that wall. Doing a good job of microwing. Those Zerglings still going to press on in. SCV's pulling off the line. So this is going to be delayed mining time. Going after the barracks. Follow up Zerglings picking off that additional Marine. The SCV is able to get some degree of a surround, but all the Marines are down. And this might be a quick victory for Jiraiya, potentially. Sweeping around. Looks like he's not going to camp on top of that barracks. Still, more SCVs coming off the line. They're having trouble fighting this off. And are we going to see more Zerglings? I'm going to try to keep an eye on that mini-map as they make their way across. SCV attacking that extractor, trying to do some form of distraction in the midst of this. Marine pops back out. But additional units being wiped out. In the midst of this, somehow Phoebus maintaining an SCV worker lead. But keep in mind, he's still delayed on that mining time. Again, more Marines getting picked off. Jirai has just been threading between these SCVs to pick off these Marines. Second barracks being built. Gas mining. SCV trying to attack that, that drone line in the midst of this. And once again, yeah, Zergling's getting free hits. And this has just been an immense amount of delayed... Mining. So if Jiraiya can just keep up with his macro and follow up in the midst of this. Oof. Zergling's getting wiped out there. If he can just wipe out in the midst of this. And a third hatch from Jiraiya rather than opting for quick layer. He can still move into quick layer and I think have a, a good pressure of this. More Zergling's flooding down. There's still not a barracks or sorry, a bunker. At the natural expansion. Realize I need to update my title on Twitch now. Refinery. Going up for Thebus. So Thebus now has the hard work of the macro race. To beat Jiraiya. And the other thing is. Is if Jiraiya opts to. He could just go. Some other. It, it, basically Thebus in a very difficult situation here. Zerglings. 
trying to walk their way doing a little bit of SCV disruption right there. There isn't speed upgraded currently. Speed upgrade still on the way for these Zerglings. I think it is the right decision to go ahead and skip that Zergling speed. Marines moving out, layering on that damage that Overlord might get caught in open field. Oh, this is going to be close. Let's see if the Marines can position underneath. The Overlord just scooping out. Every little bit would help. Academy being built to get Stimpak sooner than later. But as far as a follow-up, Dry has a lot of options. Phoebus, somehow with a worker count lead, though. A barracks being lifted off. I wonder if that was a mistake. Repositioning it, maybe to get better turret placement across various locations. Bunker at the natural. Zerglings sweeping through, just making sure there wasn't a hidden expansion. More Zerglings being built. So yeah, Jiraiya looks like he wants to just go for the, the two-base bus. And he's got a Hydralist end. Going to go for Lurker Tech. Zerglings flooding in. Trying to make their way to the main. Good blockade, though. So that bit of a misstep there from Jiraiya ended up losing a lot of Zerglings. And an SCV has managed to sneak out. He needs to take this SCV down before it gets to that natural expansion because if Phoebus spots that Hydrogen and Lurker Tech, could be in a good position to respond to it. A Creep Colony actually being planted for a Sunken. So Phoebus actually weathering this rather well. So Lurker follow-up from Jiraiya, Factory being planted, Stimpak being upgraded, Comsat Station on the way. Let's see if it scans the main or the natural. Not plopping down a second Comsat Station, potentially because of lack of gas. Engineering Bay is in place, level 1 weapons on the way. So Thebe is trying to kind of recover into a stereotypical build order. Lurker Tech finishing. Hydralisks are now being produced. Comsat Station sees Hyd a, catches the edge of a Hydralisk. And it looks like Jiraiya potentially trying to play like he was in Game 1. So rather than opting for going for aggressive Mutalisks, just wants to make a rush potentially to a third hive, or sorry, a third base with a third gas that's difficult to hold and grab... Lurker Tech to defend it and make his way to Hive Tech and Tier 3 units from there. Didn't work out in Game 1. I, I'm going to be honest, I don't like that decision here in Game 2. I would have liked to see more Mutalisk level 1 weapons and just positional play from there. Machine Shop plopped down, Starport already in position, Stimpak's finished, we got range now on, being upgraded. Second comps Compsat Station being rebuilt. Looks like it was canceled briefly. Thebus holding position. Is moving out of Marine to go ahead and provide some scouting. Let's see if some Lurkers have managed to sneak through. Let's see if they can catch this Marine. That's going to be very suspicious that these Lurkers are on, loca uh, on location, though. So Thebus is going to have to deal with Jiraiya shelled up. But upon seeing this, like, I would just, yeah, grab a third base. And it looks like he's already got it. Already maybe has a sense of this. So he's moving in an SCV. Potentially in position to go ahead and grab his third. And a Marine snuck through. Yeah, finds the upper left-hand corner. The Lurkers... What were you doing, guys? Medic Marines making their way that direction. So maybe hold position Lurkers as a bait. A single Zergling moving up to do the kill. So this is a huge bait on Jiraiya's part. The Mind Games. He's going to throw away this Zerg Zergling intentionally to make it look like this is an undefended position. Oh, they weren't hold position, though. But doesn't matter because Thebus walks straight across it. Is going to be able to salvage maybe his medics if these Zerglings don't get a move on. But able to wipe that out. Nice Sim City here at the natural. In, in position to potentially defend all in Lurker as a follow up. Looking for the Queen's Nest somewhere in the midst of this level. Maybe he's just going to try to stick it with Lurker Hydralisk for the long term. He does have spines being upgraded, level 1 missile attack, also upgrading 4. Barracks and a science vessel on the way with that stereotypical siege tank. I shouldn't say stereotypical, typical for Thebus siege tank in the mid game. Level one weapons online. Drones piling across the map. Hydralisks moving across there to engage as well. And Jiraiya now going again into a defensive stance. Just about even is up a base. Exactly where it wants to be. That SCV still pocketed though to the three o'clock location. I kind of like Lurkers on this map, now that I think about it, actually, because of 
the mid-map positioning and also a lot of these ramp positionings against Medic Marine. <clears throat> we'll see how it plays out in the long term. Jiraiya, even in supply, not exactly where we want to be as Zerg. Phoebus, opening up his natural expansion. Starport is going to build a dropship. I actually like this play, particularly against what Jiraiya has been doing, because it ends up being a late spire comparatively, which makes the main very exposed. Also, that means science vessels end up being a little bit easier to hold, so you can sneak that dropship. Medic Marine grouping siege tanks moving mid-map. Jiraiya, a little bit behind in workers, but he's holding near even supply counts. And with the tech advantage that he will soon have, as soon as that hive comes up, that's winning. Natural expansion on threat. Tank sieging on the low ground. So he's just going to try to push through with those siege tanks. But dropships and medics and marines making their way to this upper left-hand corner. That's where the spire is located. That's unfortunate. So it has a juicy building potentially there to take out. Carapace. We also have devil, double evolution chambers to make these this Hydralurk play a little bit beefier and stronger. Hydralus Den being assailed. So Dry is going to have to attack into this position. And it's going to be challenging. Sweeping some lurkers around. Dropship making its way across. Defense Matrix on the low ground to make this even harder. Dry now with a supply count lead. Let's see how long it lasts. Comsat being unloaded. Upper left hand corner. Big counterattack though. From Dry to sweep out that low ground. However, lost a lot of drones here in the upper left. The Lurkers trying to trail. Is there going to be a Scourge? Yeah, it looks like there are Scourge being produced. He was trying to get what he can out of this. But now he's locked into two bases. And Jiraiya now in a strong position as far as a follow-up. Dropping these Marines in position. Hydra Lurker barreling towards that natural expansion. They're actually going to be ahead in the overall upgrade count. The Scourge going to get picked off. Lurkers getting caught on the high ground. Everything get, being wiped out right there. And now Phoebus behind in supply, behind in upgrades. And as Lurkers pressing into his natural expansion, Jiraiya with more bases. Lurkers sweeping in from the south. Lurkers at the natural expansion is not a good situation. And it looks like Jiraiya, if he can plant this, make this attack work, sweeping... Medic Marines, but the Lurkers dying in droves. Deep is still holding. Spending a lot of troops right there. Marines still somehow up there in that upper left-hand corner. I was wondering if that was the dropship or not. So Thebus, with his back against the wall, has a lot of workers to his name. Jiraiya needs to resaturate that upper left-hand corner. But in the meantime, Jiraiya just pumping units out, is continuing the upgrades as well, and now adding that Queen's Nest. And I don't see a large enough science vessel count to make up the difference. Six racks pumping what they can. Phoebus pushing out, trying to find some space, floating a command center out to the five o'clock location. Jiraiya there, potentially to greet it. Only a single lurker, though, in this grouping. A science vessel getting picked out of the air. He really needs to keep those alive. The siege tank's going to get picked off as well. And actually, the Hydralisks are going to exchange pretty well here because there's... No medics with this marine force. Doesn't look like Jiraiya realizes that, so he's just going to back off, grab a fourth. When your head get further ahead, looks like that marine lost its life in that upper left-hand corner. So Phoebus holds, medics regrouping with those marines, kind of dodged a bullet right there, but you can see the white moving out on the map. Flurry of compsats. From Phoebus, just to try to get an eye on the army out there. Hive tech on the way, about halfway finished. And Dry is going to have four gas to work with. Phoebus pouring on the macro, all of a sudden up 10 supply, trying to sneak a third expansion with a bunker and just bullying his way into the middle of the map. Dropping in a radiate on the lurker that's there. Big maneuvers 
That Lurker Egg looks like it might get wiped out. Jiraiya trying to hold the high ground. Science Vessel barely escapes. Jiraiya having a little bit of trouble controlling his army, but I like this, this very aggressive play from Phoebus to go ahead and grab that 3 o'clock. Jiraiya doesn't see it. He might be able to sweep and do something about it, especially with Lurkers getting position there. Otherwise, but in the meantime, he's hit Hive Tech. He's got that Defiler Mound on the way. Just trying to buy himself some time. It looks like that Scourge is going to see that bunker now. But he's going to seed that high ground in the middle of the map. Eat a little bit of additional Radiate. Now keep in mind though, these Lurkers, level 2 weapons and Carapace not that far from finishing. Level 2 weapons, level 1. So Phoebus doing a good job of keeping the upgrades on his end. He's trying to walk across the map. And start threatening the, the bases in the upper left hand corner. Lurker's being taken out and just, yeah, splitting this army in half. So Phoebus pouring on that aggression. Scourge able to get overhead. One Science Vessel down. A second Science Vessel getting picked off. So mitigating that count. And now trying to surround this army. Sweeping in mostly from the right. It looks like with that high ground advantage, though, Phoebus holds. And all of a sudden, Jiraiya's supply plummeting. Third base is up. That base is not yet saturated, however. But on the other side of the map... Defiler Mound in position, waiting for Consume to upgrade. I might have missed whether it upgraded or not. Some Creek Colonies and whatnot to potentially deal with dropships in the upper left-hand corner. Hydro's trying to pour through, but Phoebus, in an anticipatory move, pushing through and engaging there. Dryas sweeping through to clean up this attack force in the middle. Oh, Scourge lands! That means these Lurkers are going to hold. So Jiraiya playing a little bit off meta. Hydra Lurker, Defiler, Scourge play here. The Hydra again moving across the north. Phoebus though with a strong economy. 64 workers and he just seems to have these pockets of attack force where he's just carving through the reinforcement points. Catching an overlord here and there. He's all of a sudden 60 supply ahead. And pressing into these bases in the upper left hand corner. This hatchery is going to get wiped out. Phoebus is starting to take control of this match. Siege tanks on the low ground. There is a defiler in position. Consume is just starting though. And that natural expansion looks like it's at risk of being breached. A Nidus canal being produced. The Hydra is trying to pour in from the rear. Engage what they can. There is a single Sutton colony there. But there's a lot of forces at various locations to defend. And Phoebus is pushing in to everything in the upper left. Phoebus doing Phoebus things. From the low ground, there's that mischance. But those siege tanks at a very comfortable position there, assailing that. The attack forces look like they're pressing through to the natural expansion. There are lurkers to, if they can just burrow. But Dry is so distracted with these attacks, it looks like he isn't able to burrow them in time. So Phoebus now assailing on every front. Looks like this has been cleaned up in the upper left-hand corner. Not much of an attack force, so it's possible that Jiraiya is still going to... He's actually burrowing a Lurker Egg across that ramp to defend it. Has lost his natural expansion. Somehow held the upper left. But Phoebus pouring on more pressure. The Science Vessel is moving in. Potentially to drop a Radiate. And now all of a sudden, Jiraiya down to three bases. One of them down is his natural expansion. Science Vessel picked off in the air. That's going to make these Lurkers hold for a longer period of time. Going to have to rely on Comsat. And Phoebus moving those Siege Tanks... In fire bats here as well, he is pressing hard. Third base also starting to saturate. Some lurkerlings and defilers might be able to push in from the rear. But a lot of hydralists losing their life for free. And this has turned into a skeleton crew of a counterattack force. A bunch of siege tanks. To press into this, the fire bats blockading out of... Wow, great play from Phoebus. Block body blocking with those fire bats. The Scourge not quite able to... Never mind, take out the Science Vessel. So Phoebus is going to have to wait to go ahead and attack this main. Regrouping a counterattack. Overlord's going to see the Marines and Siege Tanks coming, but there's nothing to defend the upper left currently. The Siege Tanks look like they're mostly going to walk up. I'm going to say unopposed, though. Zergling's not getting a lot accomplished here. Level 3 weapons online, so they melt through those Zerglings rather rapidly. 
Second hatchery being planted. The Ultralisk Cavern is here. But I don't know that Dry has enough of economy to get a sufficient amount of Ultralisks out to stop Phoebus' attack. It looks like he was able to clean up that attack at his natural, but pays for it in losing the natural in the upper left-hand corner. And Phoebus is just really swinging this match now. Jiraiya with a desperation hatchery at the natural. He still has tech. It's just he doesn't, and he has level 3 carapace, which is fantastic, but his main is mined out. This is his only mining base. He has, he has all the tech in the world, but only three ultras can be produced. And Phoebus is rolling off three bases now. Firebat obliterating everything with that defense matrix and those medics. Those poor Zerglings. There are more of us. Why isn't this working? Uh, six barracks. Now Vulture is starting to field out. I, I feel like Jiraiya... Got to know the situation here. And Ultra is coming down. Still trying to fight it out. More attack forces grouping up. Another desperation drop. The drone gets killed for its efforts. So main mind out. Or no, actually never mind. Main still up. Natural expansion mind out for Thebus. But he's still got two additional bases right behind it. Jiraiya has nothing there. So this is his one mining base. Trying to sneak an expansion at the 12 o'clock location. It has been scouted. It is a cleanup operation now for Thebus. He just needs to spend his minerals. Really to finish this match. Ultralisk moving in. It does have level 5 carapace, but no weapons upgrade. Might be enough, actually, to clean up these siege tanks. Zerglings flooding through, but with that, a counterattack moving up. I'm not sure if I want to call this a counterattack, or just part of the regular forward attack from Thebus. Immediately obliterating this natural expansion before it was even able to grab a sliver. Now we're seeing a racer trick. Trying to find drones, and actually it's going to find Zerglings and everything else. Those poor... Oh, those poor drones. Just getting obliterated right there. As an afterthought, Phoebus moving up to go ahead and wipe that out. Some Zerglings and Ultralisks now making their way to the natural to go ahead and clean this attack force up. But Jiraiya... Feels a little bit too little too late. Let's see if these Ultralisks actually end up surviving against this Medic Marine Force. This might be the GG moment for Jiraiya upon losing these Ultralisks and still having that threat of a Medic Marine Force. Yeah, there's GG. Ugh! So Jiraiya opting to not go for the three-hatch Muta play, instead going for a longer Lurker match. And Phoebus, once again, with a lot of aggression, able to pull out Game 2. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We're going to go to Game 3 momentarily. Thanks for listening.